Hi guys, my name is Scorpio. Hi, this is ENX04. Today we will be explaining stacking rate farms. First of all, I want to thank Brett, Nick, and ENX04 for helping me. A raid is an in-game event that spawns in waves of different mobs, adding up to about 100 mobs from a single raid. In normal raid farms, all the waves spawn one after another in a short amount of time, and the player will trigger the next raid after killing all the waves. Every raid has a center, and most of the events happening in a raid are related to the raid center. Every raid center is independent from each other, and there could be multiple raids happening simultaneously. In stacking raid farms, not only do all the waves spawn in quickly, but also having multiple raids ongoing simultaneously. As a result, more waves are spawned at a time, providing players with a lot more item drops comparing to a normal raid farm. Before getting into raid farm explanations, we need to first know what is a subchunk. A Minecraft world is divided into chunks, which are 16 by 16 square columns that stretch from the bottom of the world all the way to the build limit. Chunks are also divided into 16 blocks high sections called subchunks. So each subchunk is a 16 by 16 by 16 cube. In game, player could press F3 plus G to show the chunk borders. The blue horizontal lines are the subchunk borders. To start a raid, players will need to have Battleman effect on them. Battleman can be gained by players and team wolves when they kill an illager with an ominous banner that is not in a part of a raid. A team wolf killing them gives its owner the Battleman effect. An occupied point of interest is a workstation, a bed, or a bell claimed by a villager. When there is an occupied point of interest within a 3x3x3 subchunk region, around a subchunk the player with Battleman is located in, the Battleman effect disappears and a raid starts. The raid center will be at the average coordinate of all occupied point of interest within a 64 block radius sphere around the player. If there is only one occupied point of interest within a range, the raid center will be located at that block. When a workstation is moved or broken, the point of interest is removed. The longest time required for a villager to reclaim a point of interest is 20 game ticks. In every game tick, the game checks if there is an occupied point of interest in the 3x3x3 subchunk space around the raid center. If there are none, it searches in a 5x5x5 subchunk space around the raid center for a subchunk that does have an occupied point of interest in a 3x3x3 subchunk space around it. It will prioritize the more negative locations, with X being the least important and Z being the most. If the conditions are met, it will shift the raid center to the subchunk position of 888 in the chosen subchunk. You can check your subchunk position using the F3 debug screen. If there are multiple subchunks that meet the condition, it will shift to the nearest one. If a new raid center is created within a 96 blocks radius around the previous raid center, it will not trigger a new raid. Instead, it will only add bad omen levels to the previous raid up to level 5. You will need to shift the raid 96 blocks away from the initial position to trigger a new raid. When a bad omen level is higher than 1, an additional wave spawns with the same strength as the final wave. Raiders will also have an increased chance of spawning with enchanted items with higher bad omen levels. Here's an example of Raid Center Shifter, also known as a raid engine designed by ENX04. It shifts the raid center upwards by moving the composters claimed by a villager one at a time. The raid center shifts to the chunk below the higher workstation which is not removed yet. The workstation is then moved after to game ticks, shifting the raid center upwards again until it is out of range. To find a valid spawn location at the beginning of each raid wave, there are 3 spawn attempt phases with 20 attempts per phase. For each attempt, a random block location is chosen a certain distance horizontally from the raid center. It only chooses the location on the ring, not any blocks within the range. The radius of the ring is 64 blocks in the first phase, 
32 in a second and 0 in a third, which is directly at the rate center itself. After that, a random 0 to 4 is added to the x and z coordinate of the chosen location. The final x and z coordinate is the chosen spawn location. In most rate farm designs, you'll need to spawn proof the area around the farm so that the spawn location is forced to be located in the spawning platform, which is usually placed above the rate center. Once the spawn location is determined, the game checks if the highest block is spawnable. For a spawn location to be valid, the block must have a solid opaque top face or being a snow layer. If it fails, it will continue to find the next location. This means you can stop the rate waves from spawning by making sure the highest block is non-spawnable. When a mob spawns, they will spawn one block higher than the highest block, leaving an air block between their feet and the block. Here is a good example of using floating snow layer to let the raider spawn and immediately fall down to the killing chamber. The number of waves depends on the difficulty. There are 3 waves in easy difficulty, 5 in normal, and 7 in hard. Every 20 game ticks from the raid is created, it will check the position of the raid mobs spawned from this raid. If they are 112 blocks away from the raid center, they are removed from the raid. Illegal captains that are not in a raid can be used to obtain bad omen effect. When there are no raid mobs 112 blocks from the raid center, the raid will spawn the next wave. Every 20 game the in-game time, every raid mobs which is not a naturally spawned witch that is not in a raid will check if there is a raid center within 96 blocks radius from them. If there is one, they will join the raid. Edger captains that join the raid will not provide bad omen effect until they are removed from the raid. When an illager captain is killed in a raid, other illagers in the raid will try to pick up the banner dropped by the previous captain to become the new captain. If the new captain is not in a part of the raid, killing them would also give bad omen effect. Battleman Bank Designs uses this mechanic by triggering a raid near a pillager outpost and collecting the pillager captains spawned naturally in the outpost so that players could easily gain bad omen effect. That's all for today's video. If you liked my video, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.